now I get back to little points I want to make. First, I want to say, I want to point to three things which people tell each other, and these things are false. At least the way most people understand them, they're false. So the first thing that you have, everybody has heard people say is, uh, you should get into your feeling. You should have it more. Make it more intense. Let it be more, because then it will resolve. This is false. I say stand next to it, acknowledge it, let it speak to you, but be you and don't get sunk in the feeling. Because feelings and emotions are not pieces of stone or paper or something that are sitting in there and you're going to get them out. They're not things which you can get out. They are made fresh every time. I can think of something that happened to me 35 years ago, and every time I think of it, it regenerates the same trauma, the same experience. Not as bad, but it regenerates it. It will always regenerate it. So just by regenerating it, it does not resolve. Am I clear? People have now understood that, but only in some circles. It's called don't re-traumatize. Well, how do you work with a feeling without that? Well, you work with it by being next to it and preferably by having another person with you because that makes a big difference. That person doesn't have to know anything, but they have to care about you and they have to know that you're intricate. Now, that kind of company is very important with it. But the most important thing I'm trying to say is that thing everybody's telling everybody, it's false. Another thing that they tell you that's false is express your feelings to the other people, especially to somebody close to you. Tell your daughter how you feel. I say, don't. The first thing is to recognize that when you express your feelings, your experience, your needs, whatever, when you express yourself, the other person does not hear what you mean, the way you mean it. So what you have to do to express yourself or to get understood is to express a little bit, half a sentence. And then right away, you want to find out how it landed, what it meant over there in the other person. And if they you know, are conversant with this kind of psychology stuff that we do all the time, they'll tell you. If not, it's a little difficult. If you're talking to a more traditional person, they're not going to tell you what they thought you meant. So it's hard to get it. But if you see their face, you can often see right away that whatever it meant to them, that wasn't what you wanted to say. Then you have to work with that. So if, if they tell you, it's easy. If not, you have to say, you know, I think I did something bad by saying that, uh, what was it, or I think it hurt your feelings and I didn't mean that, or I think you got something I didn't mean, uh, or what did you get? The closer the person is, the more different they really are from you. And this, isn't, this looks like a paradox, but it's not. Because in a superficial relationship, we have all these things that we do that mean the same thing to everybody. If you go in a store and you say, I want to buy, uh, I don't know, a pack of cigarettes, and they know what you mean. But if you expressing something more intricate from yourself, which you only do with a close person, they don't know what you mean. They're their own person. So you have to ask, and then when you hear what you, they thought you meant, if it's really what you meant, well, then you're lucky. So then you can go to the second half of your sentence. But typically not. Typically you say, oh my God, that's not what I meant. And you all collapse and you think you're all alone, and you're never going to be understood, and all, 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 all. And then when you recover, then you try to say, oh, I see how you got that, you know, it's not that you're irrational, oh, I see how you meant that, oh, I see why you thought it that way, oh, that's right, my tone of voice was sort of like that, oh, yeah, you're, and make it possible to, to, that that was a human thing that happened, and then you can say again what you meant in a different way. And it repeats. You, know, you say, well, what did you mean? Well, maybe this time it's closer, but it's 
you meant. So then again, you say, oh, I see, I see. Well, that's not quite, uh, but I see how. And then finally, when you say it maybe the, the third time, you have this moment of understanding. Then I say, stop right there. Enjoy that moment, take the rest of the day off. <laughs> Save everything else you wanted to say for another time. <laughs> and that's both a sour thing I'm saying, it's only spoil it, but it's also, and, and I'm saying a lot of sour things, I'm saying don't ever expect to be completely understood, you're much too intricate and, uh, for that, and you don't completely understand yourself, so how is another person going to do that? Uh, don't do that. But. I'm also saying something positive. I'm saying the moment when you are understood or when you really understand the other person is a precious moment. And it should be enjoyed. And it should be And you should be able to say, oh, well, now let's go and spend the rest of the day together outside and, and, or whatever. Uh, because this kind of understanding that we create with listening and focusing is always only a moment. The moment stays forever. You can always go back to remember when, but, but it's only a moment because they're two different intricate systems and they're never going to be parallel except as a result of listening in this moment. And you know that when you listen to somebody because you do get to, they correct you a few times and then you really do know what they mean and they really feel heard. And, oh. But then the next thing they say will surprise you. So it's a complete understanding, but then it's still, it's still how you go on and how they go on is not the same. So, so don't just express yourself. I call it dumping now. But the myth is still...